Alright guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be making a lamp. Without further ado, let's begin. Alright, let's begin. First thing, uh, let's go to front view and let's add a reference image. So the image will be in the description. So let's add it shift A and image reference. And then let me load up the image right there. Okay, there we go. We got the image. So first thing, let's actually delete our default cube and add a cylinder. Now, first thing, when you add the cylinder, uh, let's change the resolution right here, the add cylinder. Once you add it, you can click right here and let's change the vertices to 33. Since we're going to make the top part diverge into three parts and it's going to be important later. Okay. So first thing, let's move this back. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to scale this down to the amount that it says on this reference. So now on this reference is probably using millimeters as you can see right here. So let's do that. So the base of the lamp will be 18 centimeters, 180 millimeters. So let's go to our object properties and down here at scale, uh, change the X to 0 0.18 to put it in the correct scale. Okay. So now you can scale it down like this and let's move our image as well and then scale it down to be the same size as the cylinder. Now, if you're having a hard time, you can turn on X, uh, wireless so you can try to see it better. Okay. I guess about this much is pretty good. Hmm. Okay, this is nice. Let's select our cylinder. I'm going to scale down a little bit more. And I'm going to move it up so that it's on the grid. Let's also move this up along with it. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So now let's go back to solid mode. And first thing, what we're going to do is we're going to inset the top face like this. So you can go into front view, so you can inset the top, press I like this, and then you can extrude it. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the reference. So what you can do is press control plus and then scale it shift Z like this. Okay, I'm going to move the reference image a little bit to the left since it's too much on the right. Okay. So the, the thing is when you're in front view and you inset an object, it's kind of hard to guess how much it is. So you can just do it, like try to get it as much as you can and then just adjust to make it perfect later. Okay. Let's, uh, select the top face like this. Okay. Select the top face and let's move it up. Okay. GZ. And then extrude scale, extrude, and we're just going to have it up around here for now. Okay. This is good. Now we can add another cylinder and then, uh, we're going to look at the reference. Okay. So it is 30 centimeters wide. So 0 0.3 on the X, 0 0.3 on the Y and oh, 0 0.3. Okay, and it seems like the height is 20 centimeters, so you can change it like this. Okay, let's move it up. And there we go. So now, first thing, let's go into edit mode, select the top face and the bottom face, and then delete the faces. Then we're going to add a solidify modifier right here. And let's duplicate our reference image. Uh, let's put it anywhere you want and then press alt G to move it back to its center uh, and then press alt R to make it flat and then you can uh, kind of move this and put it at the center. Okay. And as you can see, everything will be aligned perfectly as usual. 
So right here, you can see, look right here, how much thickness there is. So there's this line, you can just keep increasing the thickness until it's perfect. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the rings, the part where it connects the actual stand to the lampshades. So um, let's hide our fan thing for a second. Look right here. Okay. So it comes out from the center like this. Okay. Let's unhide it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into edit mode and loop cut right here and slide it up. How much do you want to slide it up? Well, about till the, the single face is like a perfect one by one square. Okay. Then we can select this and duplicate it and then press P selection. Okay. So now we got another ring. Go into edit mode and press A to uh, right click, extrude faces along normals and increase it. Uh, and you can adjust the amount. Okay. So now let's apply scale first. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make it uh, spike out in three directions. So as you can see in the beginning, we made the vertices 33 so that right here we can do it properly. Because if it's 32, then it wouldn't be divided properly to be separated in three parts. So yeah, you can just select the closest one. It wouldn't be aligned perfectly yet. You just select the top face like this in the top view. Then you can switch to uh, the sides like this and take out the top. Okay. So we have all these three sides selected. Go into top view, right click, extrude faces along normals until it touches the edge like this. Okay. Then we can just rotate it so that it's aligned. Okay, perfect. So now you can select uh, th this top ring and bottom ring like this so that you can adjust how much um, up and down you want this ring to be. I have it a little bit up and let's move it back down. Okay. Like this. Okay. So now let's apply the solidify modifier of the lampshades. Then loop cut it and slide it down. Okay. So now you can select this side now and then duplicate it and press P selection. And then now go into edit mode for this one. Press A and then right click extrude faces along normals. So that it's coming in right here. Then we can duplicate this and move it up to the top. Okay. Now let's go into edit mode for this thing again, and let's loop cut till we slide it out to the outside, till, till the loop cut is touching the new rings that we just made right there. And let's slash into it first and then just select these faces that, that's appeared on the loop cut individually like this, and then go back out and then extrude it on the Z so that it's connected to these. Okay. Then we can just join them, all these. Make sure this one, make it the active object. So control J, okay. And then right click, shade smooth, okay. So now we're gonna add a bevel modifier, okay. And lower the amount first, lower the amount, okay. And then let's increase the segments so that's it's a little bit better. Okay, the if the segments a lot, there's going to be something like this. So let's try manually finding a right amount of bevel. This is a little too little. Zero point zero zero five maybe. Okay, that's a little too much. Zero point zero zero three. Okay, this looks this looks good. Okay. So then you can apply it and you can unhide the stand thing now. Okay. So now let's select the top face and control plus so that we got like this selected and then let's move it down till around here. Okay. 
So now we're gonna loop cut right here to be under this uh, ring thing. And then we're gonna select this uh, in a loop, then right click extrude faces along normals so that it wouldn't fall down in terms of like use form follows function. Yes. Okay. And now we're gonna inset this. The light bulb, we're not gonna go into that much detail. We're just gonna do it kind of simply. And let's uh, extrude it down, inset, extrude it, extrude it, and scale it. This is gonna be like the metal part of the light bulb. Then let's move it down here. We're gonna slide it down a little bit. Uh, sorry, um, extrude it down and then extrude it back up. And then now we're gonna just try to make a simple light bulb model. We don't need to go into that much detail. I mean, you guys can if you want. But for now, we're just gonna do this simple Lee. Okay. Oh. Okay. So actually, last thing, let's separate the light bulb from the actual stand. So press Control plus until you can see like the inner layer of this uh, extrusion inwards. You can see like there's going to be this ring inside right here. You want it to select it then con and then unselect it. So you know that we've selected the whole light bulb. OK, and you can just press P selection to separate to separate it completely. Okay. So now we can add a bevel modifier to this stand. You guys might want to apply the scale so that the bevel would be 45 degrees. Let's lower the amount a little bit. Okay. And there we go. So let's uh, shade smooth this for the light bulb. Let's add a simple subdivision surface. Give it a subdivision surface, okay. Right click, shade smooth, and there we go. Okay. So now the lampshades, uh, we want to give it a subdivision surface as well. Then you can lower this, uh, do the loop cut. Okay. Right here. There we go. Slide this one, slide this down, okay. There we go. Then you can shade smooth. Okay. So yeah, there we go. That's all the modeling we need to do. You can, you guys can hide the image now. And let's add a plane for the floor. Uh, mesh plane for the floor. Okay. So first thing, let's do the stand. So go into material preview, new, and then increase the metallic. Then you can change the stand color to whatever you want. My one was like a bronze-ish color in the thumbnail. So I'm going to also go with that here. Okay. Let's lower the roughness a little bit. Okay, perfect. Now for the ring thing, this thing that holds up the shade lampshades together let's click new and we're gonna simply just lower the roughness we, we want it to be like a metal wire that is covered in like rubber or something as i like inspected in the material or something like that okay and now the light bulb uh we can just simply press new and give it a metallic as well Increase the metallic and yeah, lower the roughness a little bit. And the top part, we're gonna make it uh, transparent. We're gonna make it a glass. Okay, so let's click new right here and then new assign. And then you can just increase the transmission and lower the roughness and you should be good to go. Okay, now there's this little detail that I do in the thumbnail. A uh, lamp. Uh, I make this part the part that holds the light bulb. Um, I made it um, 
metallic like in silver color not bronze so i'm also going to do that here okay new assign and then make it increase the metallic now i wouldn't use the same metallic as in the light bulb since i think the roughness wouldn't be the same i feel like this one would be a little bit more shiny okay so now let's select our lampshade now this will be the final one and click uh new and we're going to change the surface to a subsurface scattering right here and this will work in cycles but for for the moment right now let's change it so you can change the lampshade color i'll, I'll have it as the usual green lamp actually i think you can go into like shading and add like a fabric texture like a pattern if you want but for the sake of this video we're gonna keep it simple okay and now let's go into ev and then cycles and change from cpu to gpu and then click on denoise okay so let's add a light first and a point light and move this up okay it's around here good and let's go to the the uh, render preview and then voila there we go perfect amazing <laughs> okay it's simple as that for the um light right now it's set at 10 watts you can change it to whatever you want to be honest as long as it's not too strong it's all up to you i think 10 is pretty nice warm and yeah well yeah that is it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it i'm a little late on the uploading schedule right now but yeah if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and if you have any issues don't forget to leave a comment about it okay well yeah that's it for this video and i'll see you guys soon bye bye